Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm Jorge Rivera, and I want to thank you for joining me as we premiere our new interactive online show, Talk Time with Jorge. Uh, my, Hi, everybody. My goal uh, is Jorge to, uh, and I is want to, to you. bring you information and resources that will help inform you on your tenant rights, as well as introduce uh, ideas, concepts, and information that are geared to ensure your well-being as a whole. Uh, in order to expand on what I mean uh, by your well-being as a whole, allow me to share a little bit about who I am and why, why I'm doing this for you. Uh, like many of you, I was uh, following the path that was prescribed to me, the path that I was told that I was supposed to follow in order to be happy, healthy, and uh, just well off. Uh, like some of you may even liken that to the American dream. Uh, so I went to school, I got my BA in philosophy and psychology, and then I went out into the working world in search of my career, trying to fulfill my career path. Uh, I started working in the foster the foster system uh, in a private foster agencies, helping families and children with disabilities, doing a lot of parent education and helping develop programs for the foster agencies to be able to foster children that had disabilities. I, I did that for about five years uh, after which time I became very disenchanted with, uh, with the system. Um, I, I didn't know back then that, that it was a system that wasn't wor really working, uh, but what I know now is that it was a system that was broken, and, and that's why I became disenchanted and, and I left. Uh, I started to, uh, to get into real estate and housing, and this was in the early 2000s, and I did real estate for about 10 years. Uh, and I thought that I was going to be able to establish uh, capital to be able to open my own nonprofit in order to do programming and services uh, the way that I thought was the right way to do it. And I was in real estate for, for during, during the time of the boom, if uh, people remember that time. And that was in the, the mid-2000s. And just as just around the time that I started to get a foothold on on what it was to be a, a real estate agent and doing loans and things of that sort, I the the market started to crash, and uh, so I found myself sort of floundering in this uh, this career that was only supposed to be a stepping stone to to something that I really wanted to do that I was passionate about and that I was in love with. And that was just being of service to my community and to others. And since I was stuck in this uh, career path, I had a whole bunch of time on my hands. And so I started to volunteer in my community at the time that was Long Beach. And I volunteered uh, with various different nonprofit organizations. And I was uh, just uh, trying to, to understand uh, my community better. Uh, at that point, I was living in Long Beach for 15 years, and I didn't know anything about my city. Uh, I, had, um, I had lost my home that I had purchased, and I was once again renting. I was a homeowner for, for a very short time, for about three years. But uh, before that, um, I was a renter, and, and I didn't know anything about my rights. I didn't know anything, uh, uh, what, what I can do if I needed something fixed. I didn't know... Uh, anything about anything uh, when it came to tenant rights. And throughout my course of volunteering in the community, I came across an organization that, um, that I fell in love with. And, and it was an organization that was focused on housing, uh, making sure that people had affordable housing and were informed and advocating for their tenant rights. And the reason why I fell in love with this organization is because they, they told me that they were trying to change them that wasn't really working. And, and, 
and then it made me reflect back on my past and why I left social work and why I left foster care. And it was because it was a system that I didn't think was really working and I wasn't happy doing what I was doing. I didn't think I was doing any good. Uh, and so I found this organization and I started to volunteer with them full time. I had a whole bunch of time on my hands and I learned so much. The organizer at the time basically organized me and taught me everything that they knew. And after about a year's uh, time of volunteering for them, I came on staff and I've been doing tenants rights and advocacy and tenant organizing ever since. And I'm still doing it to this day. I no longer live in Long Beach. I am now residing in the San Gabriel Valley, but even here in the San Gabriel Valley, I've gotten involved in, uh, in local groups and helped form some other groups as well. Um, in, in, my, in my path, I, I managed to finally fulfill my dream and, and establish some nonprofit organizations. Uh, I helped found uh, Long Beach Residents Empowered, which is a tenants rights organizing group, uh, a local grassroots group in, in Long Beach. And then I went to work for a statewide organization, uh, Tenants Together, and I worked there uh, doing their, their regional coordination in Southern California and helping other communities build tenant unions and uh, do tenant organizing. And from there, I, um, I'm actually now in a different and sort of a totally different sector, but an intersecting, uh, an intersectional uh, group of, of, uh, of work that intersects with housing and that's uh, around utility justice and reform. I work for an organization called the Utility Reform Network that actually helps advocate on behalf of consumers ensuring that their utility bills are low and affordable and are not being disconnected uh, because obviously you need utilities in order to live in a healthy home. Uh, and in, in, in the midst of all of that, uh, we, we helped form uh, the, the People's Resource Center. And uh, having had so much experience in nonprofit organizations, uh, I've seen a lot of different models and I've seen some that, that work and some that don't work as well. And we wanted to form a, a new organization called the People's Resource Center that was a much different model than what we're used to seeing. Uh, the People's Resource Center is, is designed to be a, a worker self-directed nonprofit, which means that the, the people that work at the, at the People's Resource Center are the ones that actually make the decisions and direct the organization as opposed to it being uh, directed by uh, board members or things of that sort. Uh, and so it's like a, it, it's a nonprofit version of, of a co-op, uh, I guess you would say, where the workers are actually the owners. And we, we are taking our time in forming the, the People's Resource Center. We actually launched in February of last year, right before the pandemic hit. And so we had all these plans of providing programs and services, and then the pandemic hit us and we were shut down immediately. So we really never got off the ground. Uh, but what we have been able to do is is offer free tenant, uh, tenant counseling services and advocacy and connection to resources, whether they're legal resources or other resources in, within the community for people all throughout Southern California. And, and so that, that what, that's what brings me here uh, today. The, the other reason why the People's Resource Center is different is because we are trying to ensure that we are helping the individual as a whole, uh, meaning that a lot of the people that we come across that are undergoing issues with their housing or uh, with their landlord or their property owner, or they're having issues around their habitability, a lot of this causes, uh, causes a lot of stress and strain. And, and it can be very traumatizing, especially for somebody that doesn't know a whole lot about their their tenant rights and what to do next or who to reach out to. Uh, and so we recognize the, the, the stress and the strain that this puts on individuals. And, and so we want to care for that piece of, of the person as well. We want to ensure that they are 
being able to manage stress, they're being able to decompress, they're de being able to heal from any, any trauma. Uh, we're very focused in, in the, the holistic well-being of, of the person and not just dealing with their immediate issues. Um, and so we, we want to, we have a, an ad hoc mission statement right now that we're still working to refine because we're really trying to be mindful and conscious about building the People's Resource Center so that it really practices what we, we preach. And that's, uh, that's mindfulness and well-being, resiliency, healing, and, and togetherness. Uh, we we can't we can't do this individually. We have to do it together. We have to build power together if we want to be able to create the change that we want to see in our communities and in the world at large. Uh, so our mission statement for right now is uh, fostering thriving individuals and communities through healing, resilience, and social justice. Uh, we recognize that that we come into, into this work with a lot of our own uh, previous histories and trauma and bad experiences, and that we're also part of larger systems that are at play that put a lot of stress on us. Um, for example, the reason that I left the foster care uh, agencies is because I saw the Department of Children and Family Services just taking children away from homes and not really taking into consideration the, the trauma that that can place on not only the child, but the family as well. And there doesn't seem to be any supportive system in, in place at that time. I'm, I'm sure that things have improved since then to be able to care for the person, right? And so, uh, so we, we are involved in systems like the criminal justice system, our policing system, our housing system, our unemployment system, our political system, our voting systems. We're in, part of all of these different systems that were man-made, uh, person created, and uh, and they can be they can be changed, but they have to be changed collectively. And and so as we come together, we want to make sure that we're supporting one another in our healing and in our building of resilience so that we can change these systems to reflect the values that we really want to be a part of and that we want to see in the world. And so our, our vision statement for right now is that we envision an interdependent world in which our healing and resilience supports the transformation and the flourishing of people and their communities. Uh, so it's not just about fighting or advocating for tenants' rights, but it's also focusing all of that energy on ourselves to make sure that we are healthy, that we are happy, and that we are together and joined, and then that we are advocating for a change in these systems so that we are supporting and nurturing this resilience and this growth, as well as fighting for our rights. And, and so that's what the, the People's Resource Center and, and I am all about. And the reason why we're putting on this, uh, this show is because we want to make it interactive. We want people to come and join us and ask questions. We want to bring resources to you to, to help you through your struggle and through the stress and through the difficult times. Right, and we also want to invite you to join uh, community groups and advocacy groups, uh, organizing groups to advocate and push for those changes in your local communities. The, what I've learned in, in, my, in my experience is that the most impactful laws are the local laws. And we know, I know that there's a lot of stuff happening on the state level, there's a lot of stuff happening on the national level. And yet it's the local level which you have a, a stronger impact on and whose laws and policies directly affect you. And so we want to encourage people to get involved in their local community groups that are advocating for, for these type of changes. And, and so we hope to bring on guests uh, from all different uh, walks of life 
that might bring uh, information and education to you so that you're equipped and so that you're building resilience and resilience if you're not familiar with that word just means uh, to, to have the ability to bounce back from challenging situations so if if you're able to to take on the stress that we all have right and we have to acknowledge that we all have it but to be able to process that and and then to to release it and at the and in that process being able to to build some strength to bounce back from difficult situations that you might encounter in the future because they're not going to stop uh, and they're not going to stop they're going to continue and so uh, we want you to build that resilience to build that fortification to 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 put on sort of like that invisible armor that is going to shield you from all of the all of the work that that is ahead of us right uh, there's our own individual work if we're in, in an individual situation and then there's the work of the community when we come together with others to try to to fight for better policies or to change systems so that it improves the lives of, of everybody and that's why we really focus on inter interdependence because we're, we're, we're stronger together, we're better together, and, and we have to dismantle this idea of, of isolation and, and being alone and having to deal with things on our own. Our ancestors knew this concept well uh, with, with uh, them being together and taking care of each other's children and being uh, supportive of one another and working as a unit, as a team, and as, as a collective. So, so this is what we're about, and we're, we hope that this show actually, um, actually brings this information to, to help you, uh, to help you and to strengthen you and to inform you. Um, so with that said, um, uh, this, this is directed, uh, again, we are focused on helping tenants and tenant advocacy. So we're open to answering any questions that you might have uh, what we're doing right now is every Tuesday, we're posting a different tenant tip on our social media platforms. So we encourage you to, to follow us, uh, to, to like us, to find us on Instagram, on Twitter, on Facebook. We're also on LinkedIn, and we're currently establishing our YouTube channel. We had some technical difficulties in, in getting this on YouTube live today which is why we're bringing it to you on Facebook. Uh, but we'll take care of those, ta those difficulties and then hopefully we'll be able to stream these shows on, on all the different uh, media platforms uh, for, for your viewing and educational pleasure. And so, so definitely follow us on our social media platforms and share us out, um, share out the tenant tips to people that you think it might be helpful. And uh, I want to take this moment to, to let you know about our tenant counseling hotline. Um, so this is the, the main service that we've been providing since, uh, since the pandemic hit. And we've been able to help uh, over 100 people in this, uh, in this uh, short amount of time uh, without doing any advertising, just by word of mouth. Uh, and we partner up with local community groups like in Burbank, the, the Burbank Tenants' Rights Committee, as well as groups in the San Gabriel Valley so that they can utilize our, our service um, to, to be able to inform and counsel tenants on what their rights are. And the Tenant Counseling Hotline um, is 888-758-8516. Uh, Again, that's area code 888-758-8516. It's a free tenant counseling service. We work on donations, and so if, if you're if you're um, if you're able to, you can donate. We're not going to turn anybody else away. Uh, we'll we'll help you write letters. We'll help you uh, mediate with your property owner if that's the case. We'll connect you to resources in your local community and in uh, on the state level or the county level if that's necessary, and. If it gets to the point um, where you need legal representation, we'll make sure that you're connected to legal representation as well. Uh, so again, that number is 888-758-8516. Uh, 
uh, please share that out. Let people know that we exist uh, so that we're able to, to help more people and inform them on their rights. Um, so that's a little bit about me and the organization at large. Uh, we don't have any guests for you today, but what I did want to share uh, is is about the the upcoming uh, upcoming uh, expiration of the tenant protections that have been in play. If you've been following the news uh, or following sort of what's been happening as far as uh, tenant advocacy, there there have been some tenant protections that were in place since uh, since last year, and they were they have been extended uh, a couple of different times on the state level. There's also some tenant protections in place on the, the county level in Los Angeles County, which are also due to expire. And you may have heard that there was uh, an eviction protection order that was issued by the, the Center for Disease Control because of the pandemic. And that was set to expire on October 3rd, but then uh, there was uh, some lawsuits uh, that were filed against that order, and so it was repealed. So the national order of eviction moratorium uh, was was sort of dismantled, and what we have left is a county level ordinance as well as a state uh, level ordinance, and those uh, are set to expire on September 30th. Uh, if you want more information about how each one of those work and, and what those protections are, happy to share that information with you. Uh, just feel free to reach out to us uh, uh, at the Tenant Counseling Hotline, or you can send an email to me directly at, uh, at Jorge, J-O-R-G-E, at thepeoplesrc.org. Uh, and then you can follow us on YouTube um, at and on Facebook and all our social media sites, our handle is at the People's RC. Uh, so these uh, these protections are set to expire on September 30th, uh, which means a whole lot for a lot of people. Uh, there's a lot of concern and a stress that comes along with this expiration date uh, because a lot of people are going to be left unprotected. And, and a lot of us advocates that are doing the work are really fearful about what actually might be coming or after, after that expiration. Uh, but I do wanna let you know that there are efforts both on the state level and on the county level to try to urge our elected uh, officials to extend those protections. So if you go to our, our Facebook page, and you scroll through our feed, you'll see that there is a call to action. And that call to action is to try to urge our Los Angeles County supervisors to extend the eviction protections until 2022. As you know, we are not out of this pandemic and, and it looks like we may not be coming out of it as, as soon as we had hoped. And, and so there's still a lot of people we're talking about thousands, if not millions of people throughout the state that are in need of, of protections. And so we're, we're asking folks to send an email or share a, a social media post by tagging your elected officials and urging them on the county level and on the state level to extend those eviction protections. Uh, because we're, we're going to find ourselves with a lot of people that are struggling to pay rent, that are going to try to have to try to figure out what they're going to be doing next. And we already have a, a homelessness crisis and people that are experiencing homelessness, uh, we don't need to, to add to that uh, because that's just going to make it even worse. So go to our, our social media feeds and, and find that, that link, that action alert on how you might be able to send an email to the LA County supervisors, urging them to extend the eviction uh, protections. And, and, and that's kind of like what's happening on the scene right now. There's also another organization. If you 
have received uh, an eviction notice or an actual uh, court summons uh, of eviction. There is an organization in Los Angeles that is, is established for Los Angeles County called Stay Housed LA. And you can find them at stayhousedla.org. They are offering free legal, uh, legal representation for those people that need it. And, and so if you've received a 60 day notice, a 30 day notice, a three day notice to pay or quit or any type of notice that suggests that people, uh, your property owner is expecting you to move out, we urge you to either call us at the hotline uh, and, and we can redirect you to where you need to go or go straight to stayhousedla.org. If you uh, go to that website, you will see a phone number where you can actually call in. So if uh, you're unable to, to do the online referral form, you can uh, call in and somebody will be able to assist you there. Uh, the other resource that we want to let people know about that is uh, very important because it's being underutilized and that is the Emergency Rental Assistance Program of the state of California. Uh, and so there, you can apply for emergency rental assistance for any back rent uh, uh, up until up until the ending of the eviction the eviction protections. Um, they won't be funding any rent assist rental assistance uh, past the 30th of September. So we urge you to please uh, to please go apply. Uh, there, there's so much money still available. The money has not been disseminated as well as we all would have hoped. Again, the program is underutilized and you can find out more information and how to apply. You can apply online at housing is key. Uh, that's uh, housing is key, uh, K E Y uh, dot com. And uh, there's multiple languages available. Uh, it's for, for applying. And there's also a phone number. Again, if you're not able to apply online, you can call in and submit your application that way. Again, that, that uh, website is housingiskey.com. And there are some municipalities like in the city of Long Beach that are handling their own emergency rental assistance programs. So if you are in one of those municipalities like the city of Long Beach, then definitely uh, contact the, the emergency rental assistance program locally and, and apply for funds uh, there at that level. Um, and if you're in need of legal assistance, uh, again, go straight to, um, go straight to uh, stayhousela.org. And I think uh, what I would like to end on, uh, because this is just gonna be, this is just a short intro uh, into what what we're going to be doing with this show and offering some resources. Uh, I want to again encourage you to find out who are the local organizations in your community that are actually doing advocacy around tenants rights and and find out if they're having meetings or if there's somehow that you're able to support um, that find out what your tenant rights are. I think the, the first step for me was to, was to learn what my rights were. And once I got a really good foothold of, of what my rights are, I was much more better able to not only advocate for myself, but then to actually help others in advocating for their situations. Um, hopefully in the, in the coming shows, I might be able to bring on some of the uh, some of the tenants that that we've helped out, and you can hear from their own success stories on how they actually advocated for themselves, get, given the knowledge that we were able to pass on to them, and and how they were successful. You know, it takes a lot of courage uh, to be able to stand up for your rights. The the system when it comes to tenant landlord relationships really puts the onus on the on the tenant to be able to defend themselves, unfortunately. And this is part of the system that we want to see changed uh, because a, a tenant, even though there are laws, 
that prohibit property owners from doing certain things, it doesn't mean that they're not going to try. I always use the analogy of the speed limit only because the speed limit says that you can't drive past 65 doesn't mean that people aren't going to do it. They're still going to drive faster than the speed limit. And the same thing is with tenant rights and uh, tenant laws. It's like only because the, the property owner is not supposed to do a certain thing doesn't mean that they're not going to try to do it. Uh, and then it's up to the tenant to be able to defend themselves, which usually means going to court and then standing up, standing up to the property owner, using their advocacy skills and knowledge of their tenant rights to defend their position. And, and so it's always on the responsibility of the tenant to do that. So I think if I was to leave you with a tenant tip for today, and I think it's probably one of the most important tenant tips uh, that you can ever possibly have, and that's to document everything. Document everything that you have to document. If you're having, if you're having habitability issues, bad conditions, take pictures. If you have infestations, take videos of those infestations. If you're having conversations with your property owner or your property manager, make sure that they're in some form of writing, uh, negotiate contracts in writing. Uh, if you have a verbal conversation with a property manager or an owner, follow that up with something in writing, whether that's via text or whether that's via email. Uh, we always give preference to the old fashioned uh, pen and paper and and uh, us postal service and we just think that that that's hard that's hard uh, evidence of uh, of conversations and of discussions and it's difficult to refute you don't have to worry about it getting lost if your phone gets lost or broken uh, and it's on paper and you send it through the postal service so it's uh, it's good proof of documentation so we always rely on that, but if your only means is phone or email, then, then do, do whatever way you can. Just try to make sure that you have that documented, have the conversations documented, have the issues documented, uh, because at the end of the day, it's for your own protection. Uh, it just protects you a lot better if you have something to prove. If for whatever reason, you have to make it to the court to defend yourself, you want as much proof as you possibly can in order to make a good, strong case. So if I leave you with anything today, is just document, document, document. If you need help documenting, if you need help writing letters, that's what we're here for. Uh, happy to help you with that. Again, all you have to do is reach out to us on our tenant counseling hotline. And the number again is 888 758-8516. Be sure to share our uh, our Facebook page out, uh, share our social media out, and and we hope to be bringing you more of of these shows. And uh, we know we had some really last minute mishaps with YouTube, so we probably don't have as many onlookers right now. But hopefully they. They come to this video and and check it out and and then we can go from there um so with that uh, again i just want to thank you so very much for for all of our supporters uh up until this point for everybody that continues to share out our information and our phone number and i want to invite all the newcomers to to be a part of our community to to learn with us to grow with us because we're better together we're stronger together and, and so we have to stay together. This, this we have to do collectively if we really want to bring change. So I encourage you to continue to be a part of our community, continue to visit us. And if you have any questions whatsoever, feel free to, to give us a call anytime uh, and somebody will, will get back with you uh, as, soon as, as soon as possible. 
so with that, uh, thank you for spending time with me. Thank you for watching this video if you watch it later. And uh, I guess I hope to bring you more information that is going to help improve your life, make you more resilient, and, and entice you into being a part of your community and advocating for what you want to see in the world. So thank you once again. Uh, I totally appreciate you. I appreciate this opportunity to even be able to do this. So I'm very grateful. And with that, I think in our tradition and in our culture that we want to establish in our organization, just want to take a deep breath. Release, because that stress is not yours. It's just, it's just there temporarily. You don't have to hold on to it. Uh, take a walk, do meditation, do yoga, exercise, breathe in, breathe out, find a practice that's going to keep you healthy, keep you resilient, and model for other people what it means to, to take care of yourself and to take care of others. So one last deep breath. And with that, I leave you. Thank you so very much for joining us. Have a wonderful evening. And until next time.